Welcome to Code Catch Up. My name is Jamie Jones, and today I'm going to be talking about React 16.3. So React 16.3 has now been released and it's got some awesome new features in it as well as some things that you need to know about for upcoming changes in the future. Now the first thing is the context API. Now what I've got here is some notes here. It's basically there's no more props drilling uh, and that's because of a new function called create context uh, and basically you get this on the React class. Uh, there's a really great overview video from Harry Wolf and also from Elijah Manor. Uh, Check out these videos. I've left some links in the show notes to those. They are awesome. Uh, but basically, yes, this is a new context API. But if you use the old context API, everything will still be basically fine until React 17, where you're going to see a major change there where it's, it's going to become problematic for you. Uh, but yes, this is a new context API, but it is very powerful. Uh, and I really feel like this is going to be a way to roll your own kind of uh, state library as well. I can see that happening. Uh, and a few of the examples, it looks like you're kind of doing that by wrapping uh, your classes and things like that within these contexts. So nice to see there. And the next thing we have is strict mode. Now strict mode uh, basically uh, that orders you to follow kind of best practices and basically it'll give you some warnings in the console. So all you really need to do is wrap your components in a strict mode kind of tag and basically you, you are ready to go. So anything that you're not doing in a best practice way for React, it's going to come in and alert you via a warning in the console. The next feature is async mode. Now, async mode basically will give any of your child components of the async mode tag, basically make them update asynchronously and treating them as low priority updates. Now, this is something you're really going to have to determine where it's going to be useful or where it's applicable, uh, but I definitely recommend checking out, there's a link in the show notes here for a working interactive example with basically this box that spins around and it shows you how the async update works and how you can interact with it and see what's different with that. Uh, so pretty nice for some things, it's really going to make a big difference. The next one is a pretty big one, I'd say. Like this one, um, I think it might catch some people out it might not, depending on how your React application works and what you're uh, using. But basically, there's new lifecycle methods, or at least methods are being deprecated, and there is a new one. Now, basically, component will mount, component will update, component will receive props, will be deprecated and prepended with the unsafe flag. So basically, unsafe underscore component will mount, etc. Uh, all will methods will be deprecated, except for component will unmount. Uh, basically, why is this? So confusion in use cases, performance, and to make a way for upcoming async mode. Uh, but what's happening with these lifecycle events? Are they going completely away? So no. Uh, first of all, component will mount will go to component did mount. Component will update will go to component did update. And component will receive props goes to get derived state from props. Yes, this is a new shiny method, which basically is a static function, and it's going to do everything you really need that component will receive props will do. Next up is we have react forward ref. Now forward ref function from the react class basically takes props and ref parameters. String refs will be deprecated due to performance issues and other things. Check out the examples for this one because it does, uh, it does need a little bit of a visual uh, view to see that and really get an understanding of it. And of course, what could be a React update with some up, without some updated uh, React developer tools? Now, basically, the React developer tools has been updated and basic, very, very straightforward stuff. They've included changes to help you work with uh, these new changes uh, in, with debugging these new types of components and things like that, making it uh, much easier to work with. And it's kind of an obvious update. You wouldn't possibly think that it might need it, but there are some new methods in there, so it's going to be very handy to have some tools to debug those directly. Okay, so that's React 16.3. Uh, before I started recording this, uh, a patch release did come out to fix some bugs, uh, so it, I think it's like 16.3.1 or something's out now. Uh, but basically, this is a nice release and it's showing where things are going with React, which is an important thing to note. Uh, with the async stuff, the strict mode, which I think is really important. I think that should be something that is globally on by default. Uh, for me, it feels a little bit weird to have to like basically wrap everything in a component to say, yes, this is strict and use this. 
uh, but that's the way they've chosen to done it. I don't, to do it. I don't know what the reasoning was behind it or anything like that, but it, it, it's interesting to see that, uh, as well as the life cycle um, changes there. So th- those life cycle events, I think that one's going to be an important one to make sure you update. And if you've got a fairly big uh, application. It might get a little bit trickier, but there are code mods for that as well that will assist you with migrating those as well. So that's always a nice thing there. Check out the docs and notes on code mods on how you're gonna uh, use that to make those changes. But that's all I really got for this one. I'd love to know, have you upgraded to 16.3? Have you found any issues? Uh, are you holding off because of some reason? I'd love to know. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you are watching this on YouTube. Also, like and subscribe would be awesome. And if you do want to be notified as soon as these come out, click on the little bell icon wherever it is on your screen. Uh, if you are listening to this in iTunes check out the YouTube channel because you get more visual content uh, as well as if you just like listening to the audio make sure you subscribe so you get the podcast as soon as they come out uh, if you want to send an email to me you can send to codacatchup at gmail.com or if you can send a tweet to at codacatchup uh, on Twitter as well as you can find uh, Code Catchup on Instagram which I'm not doing a lot of but I'm posting here and there with it uh, but that's just Code Catchup on Instagram that's all, all I've really got for this one and we'll catch you next one bye